Hello and welcome back to the Nasty Metal Production Channel here at YouTube. And it's nice to see you all here in the brand new year of 2022. And it's time to get things going again. So, what it's what I have in store for you since it's always a good thing to kick off a brand new year with an album review. I am reviewing Timeless, the second full-length album from Norwegian rockers Reckless Souls. And it was released through the band on January 15th. Now, that's not really what the band members had told me they were going to release it on. They said it was going to be released on January 14th. Since I already made a fucking thumbnail anyways uh, with the, uh, the, the date and everything uh, typed in already. So, either way, it's been released. And without further ado, let me get into my overall thoughts on Timeless from Reckless Souls. Okay, so before I really get into any of my thoughts on this particular album, with all of these album reviews, you know what I have to do. I have to do a track listing rundown so I can tell you folks what are the songs are on this album, how many songs are on this album, and what's the time length for this album. And since we have at least about Technically, it's eight tracks, but really it's seven real full songs on here. But still, it's eight. It's listed as eight tracks. And it all clocks in at the time length of 36 minutes and 38 seconds. So, these eight tracks are beginning with Intro 2, Where I Belong, All of Nothing, which was actually the first single they had released prior to releasing this album. Uh, Remember and Forget, Voodoo Girl, Firebird 2021, Room 114, and then finally ending with Lost in Time. So there's your, well, there's your eight tracks there. So, Reckless Souls. You're probably wondering, who the fuck are Restless Souls? Yes, I cuss. Anyways, you're wondering, who are they? Well, just like me, I didn't know who Reckless Souls were until I was contacted by the band members on whether or not I was interested in reviewing their what was going to be their brand new full-length album, Timeless. Well, that was at least what was a month ago, and I had messaged back saying, yes, I will uh, review your brand new album. And uh, so I pretty much had already had, uh, I pretty much took the request, and I, you know, basically uh, was obligated anyways now to review the album. And so... It's been going, it's been at least a month there, and since, you know, December or late November, I gotta fulfill those obligations. So here I am reviewing Timeless from Reckless Souls. Now, these guys, as far as their style, their sound, can you classify Reckless Souls as hard rock? Can you classify them as just straight up rock and roll? Can you uh, classify them at times maybe as punk? Well, you could probably can classify them as all of those because I think all of those styles are pretty much represented on this album right here, and that's definitely very much rep represented in songs. For example, like well, let's say like "Where I Belong," which is technically it is definitely rock and roll, but it has more of a southern tinge to this track. It's it's again it's more of a slower, more moodier track, but it does have at times a little bit of a very modern, almost southern blues tense to the song and it's really interesting it's cool because again it works uh, as you know coming from uh, the intro to and it works as there because again uh, pretty much the intro to uh, it clocks in at basically uh, 1 minute and 46 seconds with of course where I belong clocks in at 5 minutes and 40 seconds so technically it's pretty much close to I guess 7 minutes or so there a little over 7 minutes if you would combine them and it all works as that it definitely d does have a lot of those where they're wearing their influences and their uh, just overall inspirations on their sleeves with this song. You can tell they definitely appreciate a lot of that southern rock style. Maybe at times it's a little bit on the modern side, but it works. It's fresh at times. And it's pulled off greatly, so it's a good way to kind of start off the album. But when you get into at least songs like, for example, All of, All of Nothing, Remember and Forget, and of course Firebird 2021, these are the three songs that really represent some more punk influences, uh, which is more so the more classic almost punk style. Very, very odd times, maybe close to modern style punk. I won't say pop punk, but it's definitely kind of close to where it's very melodic, very modern sounding. You can tell it's more sort of really influenced by the more classic British style punk. Not really like uh, the Sex Pistols, but maybe uh, some of the other other bands, you know. 
uh, one of the more popular other British uh, punk bands that you might think of. And I'm not going to name any, but I will definitely uh, just leave it up to you what you might think of. So it does, they, they're very more arena-based punk rockers, but they work, they're melodic, they have a nice sort of groove to them, and I dig them. But as far as the more heavier, hard rock and at least style that, that they t tend to really seem to really throw in, in their stuff, that at least uh, at least it represents their more hard rock roots. That's really heard in songs like, for example, like Voodoo Girl and Ro uh, Room 114, where they're definitely more straight up arena uh, style, energetic, hard rockers, and almost uh, the kind of a thin Lizzy vein. But they are definitely modern uh, take on that sort of style, and it's done greatly. They are definitely the more harder and more heavier numbers on the album, and I really dig them. They're definitely showing in a little bit of their blues tinges in there as well. It's just, they're, but I wouldn't say that it's like more straight up typical cut and paste style blues riffs, but it just comes off like that because it's just straight up, uh, no, no bullshit sort of arena hard rockers, and it's great sound and it fits the vibe. Basically, all of, uh, with all of these songs, like again, the more punk rockers and more uh, almost southern bluesy rockers. Fit along with these two songs here, like Voodoo Girl and Room 114. They all got that, and I think they're very cool, and they're, and they're great. So there we go. Finally, the kind of, uh, to really talk about at least a little bit here on the very last song, which is Lost in Time, this is probably the one that really kind of pushes to being the more epic of the uh, of the album, basically. It's the, the more... I wouldn't say experimental, but it's one where they really start to really push their songwriting abilities and their compositions and whatnot. Because this song here is the lengthier one. It clocks in at basically 8 minutes and 2 seconds. And it's at times even also close, closest to being the, the album's ballad. And it's a very, uh, very cool, very emotional ballad at times. It's got a nice mood to it. And it works, and it's a great way to kind of end the album because, for the most part, it's a straight up rockers. But here, this one they ended on so, such a very summer, very moodier uh, uh, mood, and I think it's great, very emotional. Pulls it's just uh, pulled off greatly, and there's really no nothing bad. I think it's a very good song to end the album, so they did a great job. So, with there, it rounds out the entire album, so it just has a nice sort of pacing, nice flow to it. So there's nothing bad. Production is also very good, though. A little raw, but still, uh, it's still at, at least crisp enough, very modern, still enough to I think it's very easy to at least anyone who's listening to at least our music on the internet or streaming. It's still good enough to where I think you can hear every bit of the instruments. And it's all great. Some great vocal melodies in there. Some great vocals, like I say, all uh, part of that sort of same uh, vicinity, it's all fucking great. Um, everyone plays their instruments well. Uh, nothing is too um, choppy. It's just, it's all played greatly. So I think it's uh, since this is their second album, since I haven't really went back to listen to their earlier stuff, I can tell this is definitely probably them really uh, more maturing more. They're really are, are sharpening their their uh, their guitars a bit. They're sharpening their their edges and stuff, so everything sounds a little bit more prominent. There's at least some sort of, at least some some great musicianship that has really matured a bit more. They're really getting better at maybe uh, playing a lot of that. And I, that's, I always say that for anyone who released a, a sophomore e effort. So, and they were probably were already great to begin with. It's just that this one, you can tell they're really starting to get into more of their own groove. And they're, they're building their overall, their, I wouldn't say formula. But they're building something, and that is going to be at least all of their own character, their own personality, and I think it comes out shining on this album right here. So I think it's a very solid album from beginning to end. Nothing bad really to say, so I think it's a solid album from be to begin with. So there we go. All right, so there it is. Timeless from Reckless Souls, and since I have to do a, uh, basically say out, uh, or at least give out my rating for this album, I'm giving it a 8. 85. Uh, did I say 8.85? Yeah, 8.50 actually. 8.50. I don't know. The uh, shit was scrabbled there. Uh, but 8.50 out of 10. It's a solid amp from start to finish. Nothing bad. I think it's a very solid amp. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in checking out, uh, I'll leave you a link at least to the Bandcamp page. Though right now it's the album has not been posted or or uploaded onto their Bandcamp page. 
but at, at least at some point in time it probably will be and you can listen to this album you can probably find it on youtube so with that uh i hope you end up enjoying the album so with that that's it so without further ado me end this this is heavy thrasher saying i'm out and i'll see y'all later take care everyone mm -hmm.